Tech fans, it's time for Up with the White and Gold. I'm your host, Jeremy, the Impet York. I want to welcome you guys in this week for episode two of season two. Yep, we're still going with this thing. Got a lot of fun things planned. Uh, crazy schedules this week. That is why I am going solo uh, this week on the show. My normal co-host, uh, John Watts, is uh, he, he's. I'll be honest. He's at a. He's at his uh, daughter's high school football game. Uh, shout out to the Carrollton Trojans. Uh, I think they're playing Villa Rica tonight, which is a local battle for people who don't know. That's a big battle out here out west. And I I look forward to hearing how that game goes. Shout out to uh, the guy calling those games as well, friend of the show, Matt Skinner. And uh, all the Carrollton people out there, we want you guys to do well. But John couldn't make it. It was a crazy time. We normally wouldn't record on a Friday. It's just how it happened to fall this time. He will more than likely be back next week. So let's talk a little Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets. They had the opening kickoff game in the big stadium uh, where Atlanta United plays. That would be Mercedes-Benz Stadium. Uh, I believe there's a pro team that plays there, too. You guys may know, may have heard of them, uh, the, the, the Falcons, I believe. Yeah, the Falcons. That sounds right. I see the chat going live. Appreciate you guys. Uh, they had a good kickoff game against the Louisville Cardinals. And this is a pretty good game. I have pretty extensive notes. I, I don't know if I'm going to show them to you guys. Pretty extensive notes. I have a ton more. I mean, I don't know why I wrote them on sticky pads. Just happened to be what I had at the time. But uh, before we get too far into everything, of course, you can follow us all on all the social medias. Uh, usually the links are posted, ways to find us on all the social medias. If there is a way you, you want to reach out to us and you don't know it, uh, just reach out to us, 3 endzone at gmail.com or any of the social medias, uh, Impact Media, Up With The White and Gold, any of that stuff, you will find me, you will find John. And uh, we look forward to hearing from you guys. We've already heard from some of you guys. Some of you guys have stopped us on the street. Some of us, some of you have um, uh, sent in things. And we appreciate that. We definitely do. But that's all the ways you can follow the show. It'll also be on the, we'll be on the front and the back of this particular, particular video series. I think that's where we, we stuck them on there. Uh in honor of the mustard yellow they were wearing, I'm going to go with the mustard wait, mustard yellow. It's on this side. Uh, I do own some tech gear, so I will wear that throughout the year. Like I said, we do have some fun things planned. I think you guys are going to enjoy that. Uh, we have some guests. We are working on those as well. Uh, my schedule is always erratic. John's schedule is always erratic as well. But that doesn't mean we can't have fun, can't have some good stuff here on the show. So. Without further ado, let's talk about Louisville at Georgia Tech. Uh, at least Tech gets credit for the home game. I guess they were the closest to that stadium. Chick-fil-A kickoff game. So, uh, mustard yellow. Very first thing I say on my notes, mustard yellow. And uh, I, I enjoyed them. If that's if that's one of the colors they're going to roll with this year, then I think it's going to be uh, pretty fantastic. I like it. It uh, made me want a varsity hot dog. Once again, Coach, Coach Brent Key, whether you listen to this show and I, or watch the show, and I don't know why you wouldn't, it should be your favorite show. Uh, but I'm not going to, I don't tell you how to coach. You don't tell me how to media. Uh, I would take your suggestions, but uh, keep doing a fantastic job. And anybody that knows Brent Key, if he, if, if he's not watching this show, get him to watch it. I promise you, tell him a couple minutes in, uh, there's a standing offer from one of the hosts, and I'm serious about it. And it's it's not uh, just some excuse to to meet coach. Uh, if you want, coach, you can tell me your order. I'll come by and pay for your order, and you can take it back to campus. And and we never have to meet. I'm just trying to do a nice thing, and you know you want some varsity, but coach Brent Key, uh, for you, uh, I offer to buy you lunch at the varsity. Any any. Uh, uh, one good time that you want. Just let me know. Promise you. And it's and if anybody doesn't know, this is Jeremy from the show. 
from Up With The White and Gold. Uh, do that. We'd love to have you on the show as well. And they, and they don't have to be related things. Just throwing that out there. Uh, John's behind it too, but I'm actually going to attach my name to it uh, just for the sake of doing it. But mustard yellow jerseys, I liked them. Liked them a lot. In the first quarter, you get the batted pass that ends up being the interception for uh, Louisville. These batted passes, man. It, it, it's it's one thing if the defense bats a pass, and then it gets it's it's kind of tipped up to the defense. Um, we see a lot with UGA didn't do it so much this week, but there's a lot of teams that when the receivers can't get a good handle on the ball, they somehow will push the ball up and and if it's in the air, you just look for it if you're a defender and it falls in your lap. You can say the defensive back is just a wide receiver who can't catch. And I will tell you that there are dozens and dozens each week that catch passes and usually take them all the way back down for the score. So, uh, but to get the batted pass and the interception, that kind of stuff happens. It's football. Uh, the defense made a big, big stand. They forced the field goal early. Louisville was only up three to nothing uh, with uh, about 11 minutes to go in that one. You get the Louisville field goal late to make it six to nothing. It was with about 20 seconds to go. All in all, let's let's do it. Let's let's talk about it per quarter. Georgia Tech was working on getting the offense rolling. You got to think this is an offense that's used to running the ball 95 percent of the time. And Haynes King, who is the next person I'm going to talk about, Haynes King can fling the ball. He can scramble a little bit. His offensive line was having a pretty good night. Uh, he can make plays when he needs to, and your defense held them to six points. You're only down six points after one. I don't know what else you can ask from a, from a defense against a team like Louisville where Jack Plummer, no relation to Jake Plummer, I looked it up, but uh, Jack Plummer was playing a lot like Jake Plummer. He was he was really flinging the ball, really slicing and dicing, but they just they couldn't get any momentum once they got close enough to get the touchdown. Uh, but six to nothing going into the first, I'll take that as, as, as a check mark. It's not an X, it's a check mark. We're not going to say that's a win because it's hard to say, well, you, you won three out of the four quarters, but you lost the game. So we're not doing that. We'll, we'll say that's, that's the big, uh, let's see, check mark, right? Yep. Check mark. I had to do it backwards. That's hard to do. Um, as I said, second quarter, Haynes King gets the rush touchdown to make it seven to six with about 11, uh, just 11 50 to go in the first half. It was a big catch. And, um, and, uh, punch all the way to the goal line. You get Cooley with the big rush there. Uh, Louisville gets a rush touchdown, or that made it the, the Cooley rush. TD uh, with about nine minutes to go. That made it 14 to six, Georgia Tech. Starting to get excited. I don't know about you guys. Like, I was getting a little excited, trying not to get too excited, but uh, it was it was definitely a good thing. You have the Louisville rush touchdown right after that with about six minutes to go in the half, made it 14 to 13. And you're starting to think, okay, still, you're up one. You're almost a halftime. Let's see what happens. Uh, with about 3.18 to go, Cooley had a big rush touchdown. Cooley had himself a day. We'll talk about his stats in a minute. But uh, that made it 21 to 13. You're starting to think, you know, this is not, this is not, uh, you know, your father's Georgia Tech team. This is a, a slightly different team that is getting it rolling. The defense is doing good. Once again, defense is holding the 13 points. And this is not foreshadowing for people who know the score. I thought they did well. Uh, you get the screen to Chase Lane, who ran down the field like people were chasing him. 48-yard touchdown catch for him, made it 28-13 to with only about 40 seconds to go. You take that lead into halftime, 28-13. to George Tech, who sometimes last year, it took them two, three, sometimes four games total to get 28 points. And Brent Key's got them playing that good. And Louisville is not a bad team. It's not like you can say, oh, well, they were facing Louisville. Of course they get. No, that doesn't make any sense. They're playing college football, aren't they? They're in the, they're, uh, Louisville's in the ACC, right? You know, this is, is Louisville in the ACC? Did we get that right? I'm not sure I got that right. I think they are. Sounds right. 
could be wrong. Let's see what it says. Trusting our handy sidekick over here. Uh, yeah, ACC, because now they're in the top. They're 2-0. Okay, we thought so. So, against an ACC foe, I, I don't think you're doing bad. You're up 28-13 to 13 at the half. One of the best halves of football Georgia Tech has played since um, probably Calvin Johnson was on the team. Back in the Reggie Ball days, probably. Uh, so, we go to the third quarter, get the big defensive stop. Louisville gets another field goal. They make it 28-16. to 16. It's a 12-point deficit. That's, you know, hey, Louisville's within striking distance. Um, let's see. At some point, I thought they put in a new quarterback for Louisville, but I don't think he threw a pass. I think uh, Jack just got dinged up. He was able to come back in. Uh, then I get to talk... Unfortunately and fortunately, I get to talk about a young man I am very, very familiar with. For people who are new to the show, uh, for the past seven straight seasons, among covering other things in between, I uh, have covered the Georgia State Panthers football team. And the past couple years, they have had an outstanding receiver by the name of Jamari Thrash. Georgia Tech fans, you are very familiar with him at this point because Jamari Thrash catches a big touchdown pass uh, late in the third, about four minutes to go, made it 28-23. to 23. It's only a five-point deficit. Uh, we need to figure out I, – I don't have a problem with Stewart missing field goals so much except for that it would have mattered here. But, you know, I could argue they could have scored in places instead of him having a kick. But, um, you know, missed field goal. Brent Key said, I didn't say much anything to him about missing field goals because I don't need to. He's going to be harder on himself. He's that kind of person. And he rebounded and kicked some phenomenal field goals after that. Uh, but start the fourth, we hear from Jamari Thrash again for, a nut for his second touchdown of the day. We will get into his stats in a minute. I will tell you, Jamari Thrash is one of the most special, gifted uh, Georgia, former Georgia State Panthers that I was able to cover. He is fantastic to talk to. I know, Tech fans, you are probably mad at me for talking about the other team's wide receiver, but Jamari Thrash is a uh, fantastic football player. He is a more special and amazing human being. So shout out, Jamari, for having a big day. Sucks you did it against Georgia Tech. Uh, at least from the tech perspective. But, uh, you know, good for you, Jamari. You decided to transfer. You took the bigger offer. And looks like you're doing pretty good. Um, But that made it 29-28. They missed the two-point conversion with about eight minutes to go. So you're thinking, okay, we're down one point. There's a little over eight minutes to go. And we have the ball. Then the Louisville defense gets the strip sack while with about four minutes to go and they get the ball with and uh, Georgia Tech was in field goal range when this happened. Then you get a 74 yard run from from Jordan. His name is Jawar Jordan that made it 36 to 28. Um once again you're sound eight at that point. And the last couple plays for Georgia Tech that led to the turnover on downs were just some some weird, bizarre plays. So it just you just go back and watch them if you get a chance. I'm sure they're on the highlights. It just it wasn't necessarily the play call or the execution. It was I don't know. It was just weird. It just a weird sequence of events. But Louisville adds the field goal to make it 39 to 28 with two and a half minutes to go. Singleton. Gets the touchdown catch. The two point no good. It is 39 to 34 with about a minute to go. They do the onside kick to Louisville to try to get the ball back with just a minute to go. Louisville recovers. They end up to hold on to this game 39 to 34. Louisville ends up with the win in this one. I'm going to start with Louisville. Jack Plummer, the quarterback, he was 18 for 31. Yeah, that's not amazing. 
that's as good as good as it needed to be because he was for 247 average of about eight yards per pass it's pretty good three touchdowns the lone interception pretty good day their top rusher was Jawar Jordan, who had seven carries for 96 yards and a touchdown. Their second leading rusher was their quarterback, Jack Plummer, nine carries for 51 yards. I think he did a pretty good job. You, you, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six people, basically seven, but six people ran for 227 yards in college football. That's That's a little down. You would expect them to run for more than that. But it was spaced out among all the people. Like I said, 96 for Jordan. Plummer had 51. And then everybody else was having 30 and 20 and 10. And it's real spread out. So they were having to change up their pace. They couldn't just rely on one guy. Top receiver, of course, Jamari Thrash. Congratulations to that young man once again. Um, seven catches for 88 yards and two touchdowns. He was averaging 12.6 yards per catch. His longest being 23. He's a grinder, man. He'll go out there and grind it out. Uh, Kevin Coleman for them had three catches for 66 yards and another touchdown. That was the three air touchdowns that Jack Plummer threw. And then after that, once again, uh, Chris Bell with 40. Amari Huggins Bruce with 18. Jimmy Galloway, 16. Isaac uh, Garindo, one catch for 13. Uh, Jawar Jordan, one for six. You know, everything spread out. They couldn't keep going. Thrash was the one he could rely on. Uh, Thrash was the one that when you needed it, he found him. And that's that's just the player he is. That's the kind of player he is. And uh, that's what definitely helped him. Uh, shout out to Desmond Tell, who had the, the lone Louisville sack. They did have some. They did have some interceptions. Uh, Ramon per year had one, but, uh, you know, overall I, it, it was a solid day. It ain't that you've necessarily got outplayed. Louisville played a really good game. I thought these teams were pretty even, not because they're separated by five points, but because they both were having to change their game plan many times because the opposition was just shutting down whatever they tried to do, you know, we're going to try these short passes. Okay, well, they start stacking the box and spreading out. Okay, well, that means we're going to have to throw longer or we're going to have to find these draw plays to try to get past people. You know, everybody was having to change it up. So let's go to the Georgia Tech side. On the Georgia Tech side, Haynes King, 19 for 32, 313 yards. When's the last time a Georgia Tech quarterback had 313 yards? I can't remember that one. But uh, he has it's averaging 9.8 yards per pass and catch. Three touchdowns, one interception. I mean, that's your opening game. That's that's why you bring the kid in. That's why he is starting over either of the Zacks. That's that's just why. Um, Haynes King also was the leading rusher, which is something we're going to have to get into, you know. I'm going to have to get into a little bit. He had 10 carries for 53 yards. Uh, Trey Cooley, he had nine cat, uh, nine uh, runs for 52 yards and the two touchdowns. Uh, Jamal Haynes had 51 yards. You know, that's 156 yards between three players. I, I don't have a problem with that. You don't need to have a 100-yard rusher to be super successful in college football. If you got three guys that run for 50, that's about as good. Uh, and then Dante Smith had 18. Uh, Evan Dickens had a yard. But overall, that's 175 yards on the ground for Tech, a team that normally would average 250 to three. But that's all they did. Like I said, total offense, we've got 488 total yards between passing and catching. I'm good with that. Uh, Malik Rutherford, five catches, 85 yards. Three catches, 69 yards, and a touchdown for Chase Lane. I told you about the big one he had. Uh, Jamal Haynes, four catches, 56 yards. Uh, Eric Singleton Jr. had a touchdown catch, and so did Brett Seether. That was your, let's see, it was Seether, Singleton, and Chase Lane that all had the catching, uh, receiving touchdowns, rather. Defensively, no sacks. That's okay. 
Jack Plummer was getting the ball out pretty quick, so you weren't going to get a lot of coverage sacks. It wasn't that there wasn't pressure. It's that they were causing Plummer to make decisions faster than he wanted to make them. And that is ultimately what helped him out in this game. Uh, a lot of passes defended, tackles for – wasn't any tackles for a loss, wasn't any sacks. Uh, 57 total tackles. You had Chanilius Tatum with eight. You had Kyle Kennard with seven and Jalen King with six. I don't I don't have a problem with that. Uh, the interception by Clayton Powell Lee was uh, it was at the right, you know, the right time to grab that momentum back from Louisville. And like I said, you can say what you want about Gavin Stewart, that he was 0 for 2 in field goals, but uh, he did equate for four other points. He didn't miss an extra point. And like Brett Key said, I'm not going to say much to Gavin because Gavin's probably out there practicing right now. And I, I still think he should be the guy. So, uh, overall, solid game. I liked it. It was a good kickoff game. I know you guys enjoyed it as well. Uh, we did catch up with some of you guys and, and talked about it. Love to do that. Whether you catch us here, whether you shoot us a message at any of the places, uh, we definitely have no issues there. So, what does Georgia Tech have on slate this week? Well, they play South Carolina State. What do you know about South Carolina State? Well, they're a state school in South Carolina. That's for one. No, but uh, they're 0-2 at the moment. They are 0-2 because they lost to Charlotte 24-3, and they lost to Jackson State 37-7 in the uh, cricket MEAC SWAC Challenge kickoff. But they're a solid team. They they went against teams that, that kind of had their number. This kind of thing happens. Um, yeah, they're the, the Bulldogs. The Bulldogs. I honestly didn't know. That's why I had to look it up. But so Tech gets gets to face another set of Bulldogs. Uh, their quarterback, Washington, was 7 for 20 for 63 yards and an interception. He's going to play better than that. He's better than that. He knows that. Um, their leading rusher has 26 carries and 81 yards. His name is Howell. And their leading receiver is Tony with four catches for 51 yards and a touchdown. This is at Bobby Dot. There is a very, very good chance. What time is this game anyway? This game as a 1 o'clock kickoff on ESPN+. Plus. 1 o'clock kickoff. Make sure you check that one out. So what can Tech do to not only get in the win column, but to take down South Carolina State? I think you do the same things you did in this in this matchup. South Carolina State doesn't really have an identity yet. They have played two tough teams. They're now playing a third team. So I want to um, I want Haynes King to really. I don't want to say get the ball rolling because you don't really roll the ball in football, but to really get things started, get his get his black eyed peas on, you know, let's get this party started. Uh, I want him to, some safer passes, some over the middle, some some screens, really set it up, really get the defense moving around the field, and then I think you beat him up with some of the run, and uh, defensively keep putting pressure. I think you guys are going to get some sacks this time around. Sacks are not the ultimate stat. We talked about that on the UGA show last night. Um, it's a good stat. It's a good showy stat, and it does mean a lot. The problem is, is you could have eight or nine sacks in a game and still just get trucked, still just get ran over. So I more want them to disrupt, what's his name, Washington, the quarterback. I want them to make him make decisions before he's ready to make them so that he makes mistakes, so that he fumbles the ball, he throws interceptions, he uh, takes off running as opposed to throwing to the open guy, those kinds of things. I want them to put the pressure on him. Um, I want Gavin Stewart to hit a field goal. He needs to get that first one out of the way. Let's let's. Hopefully they're scoring touchdowns, but if he gets to kick one early, I think that could be a big thing. His confidence is fine. He's still there. Uh, I just think Georgia Tech has got to do the Georgia Tech things that they set out to do this year. That sounds like an easy cop-out, but I just told you. I want King to uh, 
really get comfortable, and then they can do some run to offset it, and then they can go over the top. I think they're going to hit some deep passes on this one. And defensively, like I said, I don't know how many sacks they're going to get. I feel like they're going to get a couple. But even if they don't, I want to make Washington very uncomfortable for South Carolina State. Very uncomfortable. The more uncomfortable he is, the better. Because when he is forced to make those quick decisions, he is more likely to make mistakes. And those mistakes, I think this defense can pounce on. I think they will swarm him. And uh, I do see a good victory. Not necessarily an easy one. A good victory, you know, they'll probably score 28 to 30 points. So I'll say let's uh, let's throw a Gavin Stewart kick in there. So 31 to 10. I'll say 31 to 10 because South Carolina State's going to score. They're going to score. They're they're not that terrible of a team. They're really not. I'm going to say 31 to 10. Um, this is going to be a really good game. I look forward to it. And hopefully you guys watch it. Um, I don't think this is a game we're going to do a, a, a live a live tweet or text along or any of that kind of stuff. Sometime this year, uh, whether me and John get together and do it or we do it separately from from uh, different places, uh, we're going to do some live tweet alongs and and uh, things like that, live, live text and there's something where you guys can follow along uh, while the game's going on and we can chat about it back and forth. It's going to be fun. Like I said, we've got some guests. We've got uh, some other stuff. You guys are going to really enjoy it. But for now, that is all we have here on Up With the White and Gold. I am Jeremy the Impact York, and for uh, John G.A. Tech, John Watts, I am going to sign off now and say, go Jackets, and we'll see you guys next week.